Two blockchains, two events, just one week apart in time, but a magnitude of separation in terms of their impact for the long-term success of their ecosystems. Whilst many in the blockchain space are still under the illusion that the ETH merge was the most significant event in the history of crypto, I'd argue there's a far more impactful one that is about to occur in Cardano that will unleash the superpower that is Cardano's highly scalable EUTXO model, enabling it to showcase to the entire industry just why it never deviated from the slow methodical peer-reviewed research-driven approach. IOG is responsible for building a blockchain and producing the technology. It's the Cardano community that's responsible for building the reasons why the average person should want to use it. Luckily for us, the community has and is continuing to do just that with a whole host of protocols waiting in the wings to launch that will entirely change the Cardano landscape forever. Now is the time, if you haven't already, to get fully up to speed on exactly what Cardano is delivering here. With the proposal for the Vassal upgrade now submitted, Cardano's competitors are officially on borrowed time, reality checks are imminent, and the inevitability will soon be undeniable. We're just four days away from witnessing what will be looked back upon as the single most important event in blockchain that turned the industry-perceived underdog into the MVP. Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track the all-important developments at the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem each weekday. So let's get straight into it. First up today, and where else to start? Saturday at the turn of the epoch, the Cardano Foundation and IOG confirmed the successful submission of the update proposal for the Vassal upgrade to take place on September 22nd as planned. So it's official, the wheels are now in motion. We're now in the final epoch of the Cardano Alonso era that in four days time, will see us enter the Babbage era as the chain upgrade takes place. So the highly anticipated new capabilities that include Node and CLI support for reference inputs, inline datums, reference scripts and collateral outputs, along with the all-important new Plutus cost model, will become available for their developers to utilise on mainnet exactly one epoch later on September 27th. As discussed many times on this channel in the lead up to this chain upgrade, Vassal is the very enabler for highly advanced DeFi protocols, oracles and stablecoins to be deployed, along with critical future updates like input endorsers that would drastically increase scaling of the Cardano ecosystem. The uninformed, misguided and intellectually dishonest narratives that have formed surrounding Cardano's development rollout are soon to be silenced once and for all. When the realisation sets in around the wider crypto space that Cardano's slow methodical build from the bottom up approach is all by design, leading to the most performant, scalable, expressive and secure blockchain industry wide, I think we're going to see a whole host of new entrants crossing over to explore the wonders of the Cardano ecosystem for the first time over the coming months. Recently, I was called out in the comments for saying that Vassal is a more significant upgrade than Ethereum's merge, and I still stand by this. With the merge, Ethereum has delivered a completely inferior version of proof of stake to that of the one we in the Cardano ecosystem have been reaping the rewards from for the last two years. Whilst I'm not taking anything away from an engineering standpoint, the successful merge was some feat, moving from proof of work to proof of stake on a blockchain with so many moving parts, commonly described as trying to change an engine of a moving car, is a highly difficult and complicated undertaking. However, it can't be denied, whilst Ethereum's merge delivered a form of proof of stake, it's an undeniably less attractive, sophisticated and technologically advanced version than that of Cardano's. Now, if you haven't heard of it already, just briefly, the Just The Metrics newsletter published by Suraj and Laura at Die Money Mindset provide a brilliant breakdown of the differences between Ethereum and Cardano's proof of stake solution, which we will get into in a moment, but I would urge everyone to go take a look. I've linked the newsletter and Twitter profiles in the description, so go give them both a follow and subscribe to the weekly newsletter. They cover a whole range of blockchain topics and ecosystems, focusing on the facts rather than the hype, making for very insightful educational reading. So let's dive into Cardano and Ethereum proof of stake. Unlike Cardano, in Ethereum, users are subject to slashing, a tool used to discourage bad conduct, which can result, and already has, in staking penalties of up to 100% of staked funds. This has an adverse effect on both network participation and further decentralization, as users are more reluctant to stake their ETH at the prospect of losing funds in the event of slashing. Cardano, on the other hand, doesn't use slashing, and instead has an innovative reward scheme that rather than punish bad conduct, it incentivizes good behavior through staking and network validation. Then to lockup periods. Currently, those who stake their ETH are subject to an infinite lockup period, meaning they cannot access their staked funds. The Ethereum core developers are unsure of a date or timescale for a protocol change that will enable unstaking. This, combined with the fact that slashing is now in play, makes for a very stressful and frustrating time for ETH stakers, and is evidently not a very desirable solution based on Ethereum's low staking ratio of just 11%. 
Cardano, on the other hand, has delivered liquid staking. As we're all aware, we as delegators have access to our staked ADA at all times without penalty or restriction. This enables Cardano holders to move delegation, participate in DeFi freely, and or spend their ADA at all times. The superiority of Cardano's solution can be reflected in the participation in that 71% of ADA is currently staked. Next, the article looks at the high and low participation thresholds of the two networks. In the land of Cardano, anyone can run a validator node without requiring a minimum amount of ADA, with the minimum staking requirement being just 10 ADA. Ethereum, on the other hand, requires a minimum of 32 ETH, approximately $42,000. Clearly, this is not going to be applicable to the average user, further damaging levels of participation in the network. This combined with the high gas fees, slashing and infinite lockup periods, it really does beg the question, other than the number might go up, what exactly are the benefits in using the Ethereum network? But if you thought it couldn't get much worse for the users of the Ethereum network, we go to custodial and non-custodial staking. In Ethereum, if you only have 5 ETH, you're not qualified to participate directly in the network, meaning you would have to depend upon custodial staking services like Lido or exchanges like Coinbase or Kraken to do so, meaning if used, you technically will no longer own your crypto. This has resulted in the centralization of Ethereum. Currently, three entities control more than 51% of the network. In contrast, Cardano's non-custodial staking has no risk of slashing, zero token locking period, and a low participation threshold. This has resulted in a situation where the protocol incentivizes non-custodial staking, thereby increasing the Cardano network's decentralization. Currently, it would take the collaboration of 24 entities to control more than 51% of the Cardano network. So this was a great breakdown, and I think anyone new to crypto or currently outside of the Cardano ecosystem should definitely take five minutes to digest this information and make sure you share this article far and wide to all those who you feel might benefit from it. So this brings me back to my original point. When I said that Vassal is a far more significant event to the merge, this comparison alone between both Cardano and Ethereum's approach to proof of stake demonstrates the several frailties in Ethereum's solution and emphasizes the superiority of Cardano's Ouroboros family of protocols. So it's fair to say, Cardano's staking is best in class. With the incoming Vassal capabilities, in essence, Cardano morphs into an entirely different beast and will genuinely begin to be able to compete with Ethereum from a dApps, DeFi and utility perspective. Whilst this will take time to form and fully materialize, with vastly lower fees, superior staking and the imminent arrival of truly innovative dApps leveraging Cardano's unique EUTXO model, the inevitability of Cardano seems more obvious than it's ever been. Now, speaking of innovative dApps, over the weekend, Maladex gave us this announcement that created a huge buzz and much speculation to what it is we're actually looking at here. Maladex announced, expect us, 28th of September 2022, with this very intriguing logo on the mask of some kind of hooded fencer. I really like what I'm seeing here, and in terms of the red demon Maladex mascot we're accustomed to, this, from a branding perspective, looks entirely different. So what does this all mean? We all know from previous coverage, whatever is happening at the end of September was meant to be announced in August, and going by what the team has stated previously, it's not the mainnet launch. So if this is the case, let me know in the comments what you think Maladex are going to be sharing with us at month end. Were they just throwing us off the scent? Is it possibly a testnet launch, or something entirely different? Interestingly, the announcement date is just one day after all the new Vassal capabilities take effect on September 27th, but it still remains to be seen what the team actually have in store. One thing's for sure, Maladex are bringing game-changing innovative features to our DeFi ecosystem that we've covered extensively on this channel. The impact of their introduction is going to level up Cardano's DeFi offering to something far greater than we've seen in any of the other Layer 1 smart contract platforms. As we've been doing ever since the beginning of Cardano Insights, we'll continue to follow the developments coming out of Maladex very closely. Next to a quick follow up on a project we recently covered who over the weekend released another pretty cool feature. If you remember we covered Mercury Chat, the Cardano wallet to wallet messaging system. Previously we discussed the fact that using the Mercury Chat system required the user or wallet you were messaging to also connect to the Mercury Chat platform to view the message. In the event the wallet you're attempting to contact doesn't know about or use the Mercury Chat system then your message would remain unanswered as there's no way to notify the wallet that someone was attempting to communicate with them. Well, check this out. Using Mercury Chat, you can now send a decentralized NFT message with a platform fee of 1 ADA and approximately 1.2 ADA being sent with the NFT. This means you can now communicate with any wallet, irrespective of whether or not they currently use the chat service. As you can see here, the NFT message appears in the user's wallet, stating you have a Mercury Chat message designed to prompt them to connect to Mercury Chat and start the conversation. 
If you're interested, go check it out, linked in the description below. Now you may recall we recently covered Meld and discussed the fact that development or at least updates regarding the status of their roadmap hadn't been well communicated in recent months. On Saturday however, they gave us this update writing, what's the latest with the Meld dApp? This referring to the dApp currently launched that enabled staking of Meld tokens. They write, first we want to acknowledge the UI issues that have caused frustration for many of you who are staking or redeeming your Meld rewards. The good news for any Meld stakers, they confirm, most of the issues have now been fixed and a couple more are identified that are being addressed. Fortunately, these issues are only with the Meld dApp front end and don't pose any risk to your tokens. During this short thread, they also provided this. Having said that, we're excited to release some teasers of the Meld dApp UI that we're honing for release in the coming months. Roadmap is imminent. So I think this is very encouraging. Great to see some screen records of the dApp user interface and of course confirmation that the roadmap will be updated and released soon. Once this happens, we'll be sure to run through it and see exactly where we're at with the progress of another highly anticipated dApp coming to the Cardano ecosystem. So that's it for today's installment of Cardano Insights as we keep track of all the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content then please be sure to comment, share, like and subscribe to the channel. We'll be back tomorrow with your daily roundups and until then thanks for watching, have a great day and as always keep it Cardano.